All right, all right. Welcome back to Eyes Open Media. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, like the video, subscribe, and share the video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. It is December 17, 2018. The, at this time last year, Bitcoin had hit 20,000. What a difference a year makes, right? <laughs> all right. Um, and this time last year, Iraq was still on a program rate. <laughs> and here we are again on a program rate okay so what a what you know, what, you know a year makes you know it's the same thing from last year right uh, you're talking about iraq bitcoin has absolutely tanked and crashed since this time last year but i believe there's still i think there's still going to be one more at least one more bull run in bitcoin coming up in the future it might be 2020 uh, when we see that next bull run for bitcoin and people will be able to make a lot of money on the next bull run all right, um, so let's get into Iraq and let's get started. Uh, let me see here. The three presidencies. So tomorrow, we hope and pray that tomorrow is the day that they absolutely get it done. Now, I told you guys last week, before even having any information about it, that the three presidencies will meet Monday night. And that's what I told you guys. I, I didn't know. I was just going off of the history of Iraq, right? When, the, when it's time to make critical decisions, usually the three presidencies are going to meet and make sure something is ready to go uh, that night. And then they'll present it in the, the, the morning the next day. And everybody agreeing with that decision, okay, to, so it can get passed through. And of course, there might be like a small group of people that don't agree with it, but it still gets passed through because they have all, the majority has agreed. Okay, so we'll see what happens uh, Tuesday. Um, regardless of the throwing of the shoes, throwing of stuff, if that happens, they'll take a break. But this, but hopefully they come back and they absolutely get it done. Maybe this time they keep Maliki and uh, Mary and those guys out. OK, and they come back in and they get it done right without their approval because um, they don't need their approval. They just need a majority. Right. So we'll see how it all plays out uh, and we'll see if, if Fahad gets the position or not. OK, he got his old positions back today as well. So let's see if he gets that position or they pick somebody else like one of those lieutenant commanders or whatever it is that actually, you know, that is not corrupt and by and, and, and deals in partisanship and proxy and quota systems. OK, um, so, yeah, so that's going to be for tomorrow. We'll see how it all plays out. They're going to uh, get this thing done. And uh, this woman that uh, did the article. She said that the three presidencies will resolve the issue uh, later tonight about the eight ministers. Uh, and the reason why is because they, they don't want the this escalating outside uh, into the Iraqi street. So you see it here. So it says uh, they don't want the parties to, to that want to transform, uh, transfer the, the conflict to the Iraqi streets. OK, and that's what's going on now already. They are already protesting for the full government and the um, reforms. And so if you don't get it done on Tuesday, you might need to take a break because some people are going to be throwing some shoes and stuff if Fahad's not the campaign, uh, the, the guy the in there, all right? If he's in there, Malik, uh, Sauter and those guys are going to go crazy as well, right? So you might have to take a break, come back, and then vote once and for all and get it done, okay? But tomorrow you need to get it done because it's just going to escalate in the streets. The streets are going to be chaos, right, in the streets if you don't get it done, in my opinion. And maybe that's what we're looking for. Maybe we need the chaos, right? When things seem at their worst, that's when I will uh, bring it to pass, right? So maybe we, you know, right now is we're too calm right now. Maybe we need the chaos. We need the, the craziness to happen, right? Uh, we need the people to say this is never going to happen. Look at what's going on in Iraq. They're protesting. It's looking like France. They're burning buildings. And then all of a sudden, they, they get it done. And then they release the, uh, the revaluation uh, after... Uh, Israel um, strikes Iran, right, at the same time. All that's going on at the same time, right? This, at the same time, the feds are, are raising interest rates again behind Donald Trump's back and, and literally collapsing the American economy because they continue to in, lift interest rates, right? All that happening at the same time. And then on the TV screen, you see uh, the capture of Baghdadi, right, all at the same time, you know? <laughs> So, you know, uh, all those important laws that we've been waiting on, they all get passed at that same time period as well. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. 
Oh, those new, those small notes that you're waiting on, the, the article number two that you're waiting on, the small notes, those happen at the same time, right? All at the same time. One massive, massive coincidence all at the same time. Yeah, God, and then, and then maybe God shows his his uh, his wonders in the heavens at that same time, <laughs> right? Interesting. Okay, moving on. Uh, Parliament receives uh, seventeen bills from the government and awaits completion of the cabinet for approval. So once again, these are important laws. They have um, these important laws. And these are adoption of these laws after the completion of the ministerial cabinet. Now, these uh, 17 laws are really are all the major, major big laws that they have passed, but they have not implemented or activated. OK. So as soon as the ministerial cabinet is completed, they are going to activate these laws, the adoption of these 17 important laws that they're going to activate as soon as the uh, cabinet has uh, is, is a cabinet filled of technocrats or a cabinet agreed upon, even if Fahad's in there, but we agree upon the, the, the lifting of the value and the, uh, and, uh, the herbal agreement with the uh, Article 140 is activated. All that stuff activated even if Fahad's in there because it's an agreement that happens late at night that Fahad's going to be the guy, but we're going to activate everything at the same time. What did I tell you guys? That's exactly what would happen if Fahad's in there. If Fahad gets in there, they're going to activate these things at the same time. Okay? So, uh, and Article 2 would come out as well, right, for the citizens. Um, because that negates Fahad's position, right? If you want to negate a person, uh, a quota system person, we'll give the wealth to the citizens. Distribute the wealth to the citizens. Raise the value. At the same time, you do that, right? And then that would negate his power of any type of corruption. All right, so that's what's happening now. They have these laws. They have sent it to Parliament, and they're going to activate these laws at the same time uh, or right after the completion of the ministerial cabinet. Okay, these laws will go will become active. Um, so we'll just wait and see. And maybe one of those laws is, to act, you know, act of activating the private sector, launching the private sector. Could be one of those laws as well. Who knows? Okay, maybe one of those laws is the uh, revaluation um, of the and, uh, and you know dropping the uh, the um, what do you call the what, what did um, the CBI say those uh, loans were non-active loans or something like that uh, non-program loans that are just sitting there maybe one of those uh, laws is uh, to you know to release the non-program uh, loans okay which is in my opinion is the uh, small notes and coins. We'll see. Um, anyways, moving on. So we have uh, a thousand uh, open, a thousand files related to financial situations. Sheesh. The opening of about a thousand files related to financial situation in Iraq previously and currently during the, the current uh, parliamentary session. Wow. Yeah, this is crazy. I don't know what's in these files. He warned of a sharp drop in oil prices globally. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It says, uh, it says, um, okay, let's actually read that. It says, uh, warned of the sharp drop in oil globally, pointing out that the possibility of activating all other economic resources in Iraq. Boom. Okay, and one of them, and that one uh, is the uh, currency, right? So activate the, uh, release the currency from being from the, from its program rate. Okay, so... You know, which allows him to rely on it as an alternative to oil. Yeah. So basically, if you activate uh, everything else, if you activate all the things that they can activate, uh, the agriculture sector, the currency, the the um, what do you call it, real estate, the uh, you know tourism sector. If you if you activate the private sector as well, activate the banking sector to international status. Uh, fully with the you know removing of the program rate as well, right? Then you don't have to rely on oil, right? You don't have to rely on oil because now here comes investors coming in all around the world. Okay, so a thousand uh, files have been opened for for financial situations. So it looks like 
they're getting ready for a big bang, a big boom, right? So something's coming, and they're opening up these files. They got 17 important laws that are going to be activated right after the uh, presidency. I mean, the cabinet is done with full technocrats, or a deal is done with Fahad. Okay, um, so we'll see what happens, man. We will see what happens. And Benny said that he saw a green comet in the sky, <laughs> Mr. Greenlight, <laughs> okay? So that's interesting. Uh, and remember, the fall is coming to an end, okay? The fall comes to an end on what, the 21st? So if it doesn't happen this week, the fall is over, right? So <laughs> here we go again. So Kim Clement said it's going to happen in the fall, and then we would fall to on our faces with joy, right, during the Christmas time. That was the pro, you know, and so we thought it was 2015, 2016, 2015, nothing, 2016, nothing, 2017, nothing, and here we are, 2018. Are we going to see it something, or are we going to be disappointed again, right? <laughs> and then have to wait till 2019, right? So who knows? We're just going with the flow. We don't know what God has in store for us, but we do know what the articles say. They are going to try to complete the government this week. And uh, because if not, it's, they're going to see massive riots and protesting in the streets, and it could turn very, very bloody. And maybe that's what they want. Maybe that's what God wants. We don't know what God's plan is, right? Maybe God wants to see that. Maybe God wants them to not get it done on Tuesday, and then uh, massive protests and, and riots happen, and things seem at their worst, and everybody says it's not going to happen, and then, boom, they the three presidencies get in there, then, uh, and and uh, Abdul Mahdi makes an emergency executive order using that red card, gets his, uh, uh, people in there, and they lift them, and then uh, Alak lifts the value because they have because they got their uh, thing in there and then they release all of the uh, laws and the, uh, ad uh, all the adoptions of the laws and they give the uh, herbal agreement and the Article 140 is activated. All those things are activated and the citizens get their own revenues, right? So that could, that could also be another case, um, you know, so it all depends on what God wants. So it's going to happen on God's terms. And so some, some people don't like that, but many of you guys do. That's why we're here on Eyes Open Media, right? We know God is the is the one who's controlling this because if man was controlling this and, and man had the power, it would already been happen. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people realize that man doesn't have the power to make this happen. I've all I've made thousands of videos screaming at these people and nothing has happened. So we we can under, we understand that man does not have the power to make this happen. Because the rulers of darkness are controlling it. Nine people are controlling the parliament of Iraq, right? Until we see this cabinet that's full of technocrats, right? Or we get a deal with uh, uh, Fahad, right? So, and then that's going to break that system. That's going to be a break in the system if we get a, a cabinet filled with technocrats, okay? Because then they're going to release those seven important laws, okay? And uh, then they're, they're going to get the distribution of the wealth to the citizens through land and oil, and they're going to release that second article and release the program rate because the cabinet will be released. Uh, we'll, we'll see a break in the system. They will be free. And then that will free up the central bank to release the currency to be free. And then the citizens will be free as well. All right. So moving on from there, uh, speaker says completing the cabinet will not take long. And they already know the names. They're already good to go. So he's ready to go. Uh, but they will meet tonight. And, uh, well, it's already nighttime right now. So they're already meeting now. And uh, they, they got the names. Let's see what happens um, tomorrow. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see if they can get it done tomorrow. If not, then watch for massive protesting and riots. And uh, if that happens, may, I, I want to see it loudly on the news. Okay, I want to see the news cover and say Iraq is in chaos and crisis and protests and riots and yellow yellow vest rioters. Okay, that's what I, that's actually what I want to see. Okay, because you know what I mean because guess what? Oh boy, and Macron over there in France gave in to those yellow vest people. He he got it that we saw a grave surrender on the taxes of 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 uh, gas. Right, it was a gas tax or something like that they didn't like. So. Let's see what happens in Iraq. If they don't get it done, let's see if the citizens go out there, they protest, they riot, they do everything, they put the yellow vest on maybe, or, or a red vest or an orange vest, and it's, and it's shown around the world on the media, 
and then the Iraqi government submits grave surrender, and they give them the uh, the names, and then they release everything to the citizens. Let's see what happens. Remember, the green zone is open. It's open from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. now, right? They would, they were, if, if we did see a massive riot, they probably would shut the green zone down, though. But uh, Abdul Mahdi said the green zone will be open. So, you know I mean, he said the green zone will be open. They're not, they're not, they're not going backwards on the green zone any longer. Any longer. So, we'll see. Um, you know, talk is cheap until rioters are at your house, <laughs> at your door. You know, Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody has a chance until you get punched or something like that, right? Everybody talks trash until you get punched. And then it's a different story. Then, you, then, then you're backing up or you're surrendering and giving up because it hurts. Um, or you're crying. Okay, so let's run through some of these articles. Prime Minister launches Baghdad electronic portal. Uh, to simplify the procedures of, of investors. Once again, they're catering to investors and they're trying to get them ready to go, okay? Uh, a credit agency expects Iraq's gross demonic, uh, I said demonic, uh, domestic uh, product to grow by 4.1% in 2019, okay? A court uh, policy uh, basically uh, reverses a uh, body's uh, decision. And, um, and so Fahad got his... Um, three areas back. So he got his three security positions back uh, that Abadi took away. Now, Abadi took it away because he's corrupt, okay? <laughs> Abadi took, Abadi uh, suspended him because he's corrupt, <laughs> okay? Um, and it just wasn't good. He was, he was, he was, just wasn't good. He was corrupt. So that's why he suspended him. Um, so he got, he got some of his three positions back. Uh, the head of the National Security Advisor, the head of the Popular, Popular Struggle Authority, and the head of the National Secu uh, uh, Security Service. So those are three positions he has uh, back. So maybe they said, you know what, we'll give him his three positions back and we'll name somebody else as interior. But he's still going, he still wants that interior position even though he has those three positions, okay? Um, but that's not part of cabinet. It's not part of the cabinet, okay? Those are different positions. Um, we're talking about the cabinet. Uh, of, of Mahdi's cabinet, we want technocrats, no quota, no part, no bipartisan, not no, no uh, partisan, uh, no quota, no, no. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? No proxy in that cabinet, and that would be a break in the system because it hasn't happened since pre-war. Uh, Brizani concerned about the future of court Syria and offers a proposal to America. Okay. Uh, Iraq calls on European Union to enter strongly in the field of investment and reconstruction. Not until you uh, do what you, you're supposed to do, because that money will be funneled into the corrupt. So, uh, Miss uh, Jenny over here, okay, pledges to continue the United States support for Iraq. Okay. Brazani's party ruled out the completion of the ministerial cabinet of the government of, uh, of Mahdi in tomorrow's session. Now, that uh, title is deceiving a little bit. What happened is that they, uh, the, 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 uh, PD, the PDK, if I can speak. Hold on. What did I, what did I just say? The P? No, the KDP. That's what I said, if I can speak, right? Uh, the Kurdistan Democratic Party, the KDP, has not been informed. They weren't informed earlier today. Maybe they've been informed by now. I'm pretty sure they have by now, right? But um, they all day they weren't informed about if they were going to actually vote uh, tomorrow, even though they were saying all weekend they were. So they haven't been, and they weren't informed of any of the agendas or instructions, okay, about that. That's all it was. Uh, okay, this guy, and this guy is meeting Brett. Okay, cool, he's sitting down talking about stuff. That's fine. Uh, okay, last one is Dutch foreign minister confirms to Abdul Mahdi the intentions of his government to increase cooperation with Iraq. All right. So there you go. So it all comes down to tomorrow. Okay. So maybe tonight you guys will get some information from the Dinar community if they have, if the three presidencies have, have uh, you know, okayed a, a deal on the um, cabinet members. And maybe uh, Abdul Mahdi will sign, uh, will get a list of the names and will sign it. And we're hoping that Fahad's not on there uh, because he got three, he, he got a three positions back. 
and uh, maybe hopefully he's not on there, and maybe hopefully it's those lieutenant commanders uh, or that command. I think it was two lieutenant commanders or one lieutenant commander, one commander. Um, you know, the, the, those uh, military guys that take those positions of interior and defense, because everybody is saying that they are more welcome to to get those positions, and they are definitely uh, experienced in those positions. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll see if Madi has anything for us tonight. Any type of paperwork that he signed, if he's not going to be there. If he's going to be there, then he'll be there. We'll see what happens tomorrow. So, let's see. Okay, so that's it for me. And I hope you guys enjoy that. We got 17 uh, important laws that are going to be adopted and activated as soon as the ministerial's uh, cabinet, the uh, Abdul Mahdi's cabinet is completed. Okay, and we're hoping it's completed with no proxy quota unless there's an agreement to uh, distribute the oil revenues to the citizens and lift that value of the Iraqi dinar. Okay, so that's it. Talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye. Eyes open.